Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to simulate um, a finite array of a frequency selective surface uh, using a real feed. <laughs> why do we mean, um, what do we mean by real feed and why do we need it? Basically, um, this uh, simulating a finite array uh, of a frequency selective surface comes up when you want to fabricate and measure this surface. Um, for example, um, let's say you have a standard size of the board that you want to fabricate this on it or depending on the customer's space that they have, you have to make a finite choice of the surface. And now you want to know how um, the surface would would work when it's spatially fed by um, an antenna. So, uh, if you don't, if you are not interested in a finite array, and uh, you just want to know how the infinite array would work, um, basically simulation of one unit cell using periodic boundary condition and fluid port is adequate. And you should check, if you don't know how to do that, there is another video in the channel that you can check. Um, but this is only for the case when you are interested in a fi finite array. The techniques I'm going to show you in this video are also useful if you want to um, simulate a large reflect array or transmit array, because these, are, these surfaces are mostly finite and their simulation results is very important because we want to know if you redirected a beam, where does it go? Is it truly going to the direction that you want or not? Uh, for frequency selective surfaces, it's a very easy sample, um, but usually the, if your finite array is large enough, um, you usually don't want to simulate it. But if it's small and you're very concerned about edge effects, and taper or spillover from the feed, then that's when you would run the simulation. In any case, let's say I have a, I have a kind of like a transparent frequency selective surface. When this is resonant, it becomes transparent, uh, basically. And I want to um, basically see how the radiation pattern looks like when I excite this with um, a radiating element, meaning that I have a transmitting antenna exciting this structure. So in order to do that, I made a choice. Let's say I made a 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter um, array here. I'm going to define or move this to the center of my uh, coordinate system. One way is to choose all of this array and move it basically to the center. The other way is to just simply go and like define a relative coordinate system. So instead of moving the structure, you move the coordinate system. That's sometimes easier. Okay, so let's say we did that. And now we want to uh, excite this with a real horn or a real antenna. Um, as you know, um, the the very most or most popular antennas are horn antennas with a spherical wave um, radiating from them. So if you are like me, you usually excite your structures with a horn antenna or, for example, uh, that is um, a horn antenna is very popular when spatially fitting these kind of type of arrays, like um, in a space applications, for example, uh, a lot of times you would work with a horn antenna. And that's a good thing because uh, HFSS has made it easy. So you can go to these HFSS components, antennas, and then waveguide here. And then basically um, you don't need to create a horn antenna or draw it. You can just import it from one of these and you can even change the dimensions. I, de I designed this structure for 10 gigahertz. So WR90, which is the waveguide number 90 works in X band. X band is from eight gigahertz to 12 gigahertz. So that works perfectly for me. I don't need to change anything. So this is structure uh, works well. Um, in case you want to change it, again, avoid drawing a horn antenna. Just come here and change these numbers. You, you have control on changing um, basically anything. 
let's say you found a horn antenna on a website and um, usually the data sheet or the CAD model gives you all of these di dim dimensions. So you can just come here, pick up the default or template the structure here and just change it based on what you have. And then since I want to excite the, uh, the center of the surface, I'm going to just uh, choose relative CS1 as the target coordinate system. And in a second, you're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna put it here so it gets imported here. So I want to um, basically excite this, this side of the surface with this antenna. So I need to rotate it about 180 degrees compared to X. Okay, great. And then I need to move it up. So I'm going to move this, let's say about so zero, zero, let's say 400 millimeter. This distance, I just chose it here randomly, but you have to make sure that this has to be based on an informed decision because as I said, a horn antenna would radiate, excite the surface with a taper level. That means that in the center, you have the maximum amplitude, but as you get closer to the edge, the amplitude of uh, the excitation is going to drop, 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 right? If it doesn't drop enough, you would have a lot of a spillover from the surface from the surface so you are wasting a lot of um, um, basically transmitted power from the horn antenna if it's too much then you have a lot of taper so you're not efficiently exciting the surface anyway let's say the, you chose this distance when, based on what you you know and what you calculated okay now we want to simulate this Conventionally, in order to get the radiation pattern of this, you would create a huge box that encloses both the horn and the surface, something like this, right? And then you would assign radiation to it, right? This is not what we're going to do. This is why aren't we going to do this? Because we have a huge space between the horn and the surface. There's just free space. We don't need to solve for this. We are not interested in the solution of the free space. We are interested to know what is happening after the surface. How does the pattern look like after the surface, right? So what we are going to use is a technique um, introduced by um, ANSYS HFSS that has made it um, possible to basically simulate very large structures with fine details in, um, on medium-sized computers. And it would allow you to skip meshing the free space between structures that are far away from each other. Basically, whenever you have a space between two structures in ANSYS, you can use this method. It's called FEBI, finite element, boundary integral, I think. And, um, and what you need is that instead of enclosing the horn and the surface is we're using one huge box, you're gonna just enclose them each by a, me a box that is just small and enclose one item at a time. So I'm gonna change this one and then say, this is about minus five millimeter, minus 25 millimeter. Let's say, I don't know <laughs> what is the, uh, height of the horn, so let's say 467, for example. And then this is 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and then 110. In a second, you're gonna see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to enclose the horn by just one surface. I think I went too, too far away. So let's change this to wireframe. Oops, see how things look like. So yeah, I went too, too much up there. So it's, let's just, it looks like 30 millimeter to me. <laughs> let's see. Okay, just a little bit more down or you can increase this one. The good thing about this enclosing surface is that it doesn't have that requirement that you have to be lambed over four away from the structure. 
it can be even one millimeter distance. And again, that saves a lot of space because you, the smaller the, the boxes are, the, the, the less you have to solve for and uh, the less memory you need, basically. Okay, that, that looks okay to me, I think. As long as the whole, ser and the whole structure is being enclosed, it should be fine. trying to zoom in here to make sure everything is okay. Yeah, very, very small. Let's just have a little bit more. One millimeter. Okay, that's good. And then we can increase the size one millimeter from each side too, just to make sure that we have enough space. It's because I, I didn't measure the horn before starting this, so that's fine. Okay. Um, and then we need a box that encloses the surface. So let's do that too. So we're gonna just, it's good that because we know the surface size. So we can just go, it's 15 centimeters. So we're gonna go about 76, half of it. This side from this side, minus one millimeter, 152 millimeter. So one millimeter from each side, this is a 15 centimeter. So H plus two millimeter, H being the substrate thickness. Great, so now we have this one too. So what I'm going to do, instead of just assigning one radiation um, boundary condition, I'm just going to assign each of these as FEBI uh, boundaries. So let's go assign hybrid FEBI. The same thing for this one, sine hybrid, FEBI. Okay, let's save this. Um, we can, I want, I'm interested to know at 10 gigahertz what happens. So let's, do this, you can even have a sweep here. Three, two. As you can see here, domain decomposition is already chosen. Whenever you have two domains assigned by FEBI, then the solution option is going to be domain decomposition by default. Okay. Then if you wanna look at the radiation pattern, since now you have a radiating element being the horn antenna, you can do that too. Insert the sphere. I usually interested, I'm usually interested on E plane and H plane. So I usually just avoid creating these huge ears and just assign it this way. You can change this after your solution is ready. This is a post-processing. Um, so that's fine. And then I'm gonna use the relative CS1 here because I wanna look at the pattern compared uh, to this coordinate system because it's nicely aligned with the center of my surface. And then this one can be set as default. So we go here, okay. Okay, so we put the setup. I know something else is wrong, but I want to show you here. So validate, you see 3D model. It says box one and box three are intersecting. Box three is this one around the surface is vacuum. And then box one is the substrate. Uh oh, look at this one. Our scatterer are, have to be perfect electric boundaries. So, okay, great. So how can I solve this intersection? So I wanna, whenever we have vacuum and then we have another material, we want to basically, um, we want the, the, the material to be overrided by the substrate material. So we can go to design settings here and it says enable material override. I've seen people trying to like, I don't know, <laughs> subtract the structure from the other one, create the double structures. The easiest way is to say enable material override here. And then whenever you have PC, it would be, um, the dominant factor over substrates or dielectrics. And whenever you have dielectrics, you would overwrite a free space or vacuum there. So that's a very 
easy fix there. Now, if you go to validate, come on, <laughs> box one and box three. Design settings, enable material override. Sorry, I'm going to zoom in if there is another problem here. Okay. Oh, look at this. Oh, because it's not relative to CS1. That's good. So we, we, we are not actually enclosing anything. So let's change this to see what's happening. Okay, better. Now it, it should be okay. Validate. Okay, close. <laughs> That's good. Um, Okay, so now we can go and then run this. I'm not sure if I can run this on my computer, but that would be it. And then you can look at the results here, but uh, I'm going to stop it after one pass. Hopefully it goes for one pass. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um let's see if it goes. Okay, I don't know what's uh, what's happening here, but uh, you would you should be able to run this, and then look at the far field reports and everything here. Basically, radiation and everything. Uh, you can even set up um, basically a frequency sweep and look at the. Um, basically, look at the reflection coefficient at this port. That would tell you a lot about like what is happening by the surface, because if the surface is reflecting it back, then um, that would uh, mean that the reflection coefficient at the port is actually increased. But that's how you would simulate a finite array of frequency selective surface. The same thing for a transmit array, reflect array, I would definitely suggest this for any type of a structure that is spatially fed. Uh, FE, basically, you can use the same technique FEBI to do that. I hope uh, you learned a thing or two from this uh, simulation and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.